Hello again. My name is Ollie. This is Economics Unlocked, and today we explore how commercial banks can create money out of thin air. So, how does a commercial bank actually work? Well, banks allow people and businesses to deposit money in them in return for interest. Then, banks loan the deposits out to make money. In order to make a profit, they have to earn more money than they pay out in interest. For you, bank deposits are an asset because your bank balance represents money which the bank owes you, and you are free to take that money out at any time. But for the bank, a deposit is a liability, because it's not the bank's money, and they have to be able to pay out money at any time people want it. Then there are loans, which for consumers are a liability, because we have to pay them back at some point. But for the bank, loans are an asset, because they are owed this money by people and businesses, and they will get it back in the future. Or at least, they hope they'll get it back anyway. So these are the two main functions of a bank: to take in deposits and to give out loans. Now, let's look at how new deposits can be used to create more money. Say you take a hundred pounds in cash and deposit it at your bank. We'll call this bank First National Bank. First National Bank tells you that you have a hundred pounds in your bank account, but in reality, that money won't just sit in the bank. The bank will lend some of that money out to other people. But keep some of your money back in case you want to withdraw any. Let's say they lend out 90% of the money. That's 90 pounds lent to someone else, who in turn deposits that money in their bank account. Chances are this is with a different bank. We can call this bank Second National Bank. Now you have 100 pounds in your bank account, and the other person has 90 pounds in their account. This 90 pounds is money which did not exist before. It only exists because the bank lent it out. So the supply of money has just increased by 90 pounds. Second National Bank may well decide to lend out 90% of their deposit, and so lend 81 pounds to a third person. This is also new money that did not exist before. We now have 171 pounds of new money in the economy from an initial 100 pound deposit. This process continues, and if all banks lend out 90% of their deposits, the total reaches 900 pounds of new money. This process seems quite neat. When someone decides to save their money in a bank, the money can be used to create loans. In some textbooks, banks are described as intermediaries who turn savings into loans. But of course, this only happens when cash is deposited in a bank account. In reality, cash makes up a very small amount of the money in the economy. And in fact, 97% of money is already in a bank account. So in truth, it doesn't really matter whether consumers decide to save their money or not, because if you don't save your money and instead spend it, this money will just go into somebody else's bank account, and that doesn't change the amount of money in the economy at all. For this reason, most new money in the economy doesn't start with a deposit, but instead with a loan. Say you take out a mortgage. The bank credits money in your account, so you now have thousands of pounds that you never had before. But that money didn't come from anyone else. So, at the moment the bank adds money to your account, new money is created out of thin air. The bank does not need new deposits to give you this money. The making of this loan is entirely independent of how much money is deposited at the bank. So, does this mean commercial banks can create infinite money? Not quite. There are three main things which constrain how much money there is at any one time in the economy. The first is that banks need to make a profit. So they need to make more money in interest from loans than they pay out in interest to people's bank accounts. And if they want to make new loans, they will get to a point where they need to lower the interest they charge on the loans in order to attract new customers. But they can't do this too much or they won't make any profit. And there are more problems which affect the bank's profit margins. If the money the bank loans to you ends up in accounts at a different bank, then your bank will need to transfer funds to the bank where the money has moved. This means that while in the short term, banks can lend out money without new deposits, if a bank wants to increase lending on a long-term basis, they will have to get more money by incentivizing consumers to deposit more money with them. And to attract new deposits, they may have to increase the interest they pay to people's bank accounts, which will cost them money and reduce the bank's profits. So, the bank's desire to make a profit means there is a limit to how much they will want to lend out. Secondly, what consumers do with their money affects how much money there is in the economy. For example, if people decide to pay off debts, then the amount of money in the economy will decrease. And thirdly, a country's central bank can affect how both banks and consumers behave. 
They can do this by changing their central bank interest rates and through regulation of the banking industry. Now, it might be worth watching parts of this video again, but to sum it all up, most of the money in the modern economy is created by commercial banks when they give people loans. It's also important to understand that the supply of money is not constant and will grow and shrink depending on how much people borrow and how much debt people pay back. And although commercial banks create money, it is rarely possible or in their interests to create infinite money. That's it for this one everyone. If you want to understand more about how central banks create money, then click here. And if you enjoyed the video, then please click the like button and click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.